Hi, welcome everybody. So today we're going to be installing Puppet Enterprise. Um, and specifically on this version, we're going to be installing Puppet Enterprise 2.5.2. Uh, previously in another video, we talked installing Puppet with version, I believe, 2.5.0 or 2.5.1. Uh, but 2.5.2 brought fewer options to the table um, to help you get up and running a little bit quicker. You still have the full capability of tweaking your answers files, um, but the installation process and the installer is different from before, so we felt the need to actually make a video to call out these specific changes. Uh, now what I have here is a CentOS node, and uh, I've pulled down the Puppet Enterprise installer for EL6 specifically here, and I'm going to expand that tarball out like so and now you can see that we have a puppet enterprise folder that I'm gonna navigate in now in the puppet enterprise folder like before we still have our, all our favorite scripts like the installer script the uninstaller script uh, and even the upgrader script finally there's also the support script um, for getting inventory items about your node and basically if you need help and support this will give our support team a whole lot more information. Today we're talking the installer though. Uh, the installer itself performs nearly identical to the way it, it did before. Like I said, just a couple of different um, questions. So we're going to run it again in the save answers mode, the dash s flag to save an answers file. Uh, like the previous video, however, before we get started, uh, you do want to make sure that DNS is up and running. Um, so I have a host name here of Scooter, and then the FQDN of this machine is scooter.dc1.puppetlabs.net, and ping scooter.dc1.puppetlabs.net actually works. This is tremendously important because if you can't ping the machine, and this is actually the name of our Puppet Master Server as we're installing, Puppet's going to fail during a step because it tries to connect to this machine to set up the console. So that's very, very important that you can at least ping that machine. If you need to set up uh, an entry in Etsy hosts just to make this happen, uh, I've got one for local hosts, but you could easily make that change. I don't care. Just make sure you can ping and contact the machine that's going to be set up as the master. In, in our case, it's our own machine. So like before, we're going to run the Puppet Enterprise installer with the dash S flag for save me answers file. And then I'm going to call this uh, master.txt, just give it an arbitrary name here, and hit OK. So basically Puppet says, that's great. Um, let's go ahead and start running with the installer. Note that I'm using bigger text so everybody can view. Uh, the first question, yes, we're going to choose to install a Puppet Master. Uh, I'm also going to choose to install the Cloud Provisioner on this node. And also, because we are a master, the default answer of installing the Puppet Enterprise console is yes. Uh, so I could hit enter to accept the default, but I'm going to be explicit. Now, this is a very important question. Uh, what is the Puppet Master certificate cert name? So basically, the cert name of this master. Um, this should be the main DNS name that this machine should be accessible. We can provide alternative or C names in the next following step for DNS alt names, but this name must be consistent. Um, so ideally, don't change it. I'm going to use the name of scooter.dc1.puppetlabs.net, which is my default in this case. Uh, so I'm going to hit enter. Next, comma separated value list of every possible name that this machine can be accessed by. Uh, so C names. Do you have a puppet C name or a puppet dot whatever our domain name is? Um, by default, those get thrown in there as well as the host name and the fully qualified domain name. Feel free to copy and paste and then add more. These are fine for me, but it's important to understand what's going on during that process. Uh, so by default, the Puppet Enterprise Console uses port 443, which is uh, the secure port. That's okay by me, so I'm going to choose Enter. The admin email address is the email address that we're going to use when we first log into the Puppet Enterprise Console. This technically does not have to resolve at all. Admin at puppetlabs.com is what I will use. Um, just remember what you chose. Uh, the password must be eight characters. So I'm going to enter Puppet Labs here and Puppet Labs again just to choose a default password. Again, this is what we're using to log into the Puppet Enterprise console um, as the default admin user. 
The SMTP server that's asking right here is because when you set up further users for our role-based authentication control, Puppet's going to want to email them for authentication, basically uh, to authorize that they are who they say they are. There is an email address at that email address, and you can connect to it and they can authorize. Um, you can choose to add this step and we will send out that email or you can choose to bypass it if you want. I'm going to use smtp.gmail.com and go for that. Uh, next, the console requires a MySQL database server. Uh, notices we don't have one here. Do we want to install a new database server? Uh, I'm going to choose yes and then we'll see that previously it asked a whole bunch of questions about the root user, uh, the root user's password. We don't ask those questions anymore. Now we're just asking about vendoring additional packages. Basically, is it okay for Yum to go out and install these packages? Uh, most notably, of course, is the JRE. Make sure you're using a version greater than or equal to 1.6.0. Incidentally, at docs.puppetlabs.com, you can see for Puppet Enterprise information about how to deal with this if you already have Java installed. Um, there are ways to work around this, but we do need Java specifically for ActiveMQ on the Puppet Master server. I'm going to choose yes to allow the default installation. And it's going to ask to create sim links in user local bin, which is also okay in my book. Uh, finally, confirm your plan. Uh, if we were running in interactive mode, this would perform the installation, but because we're saving an answers file, it's saved to master.txt. And I can choose to open that out and look through. Now, before we had asked you about the default console authentication, so the, the role-based authentication control database name and password, we're putting those in by default. We're generating a random character string, and we're using console auth. So if you have the need to change these, you can change them in your installer answers file and Puppet will do the right thing. Um, same thing for the console database and the root user password. This would be terribly important, um, especially since you're installing MySQL on the server, it's going to create that root user password. You do want to make note of that. Everything else is customizable like before. We can go ahead in here and change the name of the Puppet Agent server. So what's the name of the server we're going to connect? In our case, because we're installing a, a server, we're using that, uh, the host name that I'm using right now. Like always, you can replace this with backticks and execute bash. So like host name dash dash fqdn. It will execute that command, the result of which will be the uh, value for this answer in our script. So this is a way to make very dynamic installer answer scripts or installer answer files. Um, but we talked about that in a previous video. Everything else looks great to me. So I'm going to go ahead and run the installer with the dash A flag and give it master.txt. Like previously, we go through the installation step. We substitute all of the answers with the answers that we got from the master.txt file we just generated and this goes through the process of installing a puppet enterprise in our case a master with the console um, and all of the agent packages so like previously you'll see all the steps where yum is installing the packages that aren't vendored and then we're using rpm to install the the packages that are in the puppet enterprise stack so that everything is done for you
Very good. So we've reached the end. Uh, notice I get a warning because the system has uh, only 997.34 meg of memory. Um, just because I can't read the that we do have one gig, and when you say one gig, obviously there's a little bit less there. Other than that, we get the URL that we can access this Puppet Enterprise Master. If I change over to Chrome, start a new window, and uh, size it accordingly, we can go ahead and try and connect. In this case, what happened is I have SC Linux running and IP tables. So I can do service IP tables stop to stop that. And then uh, set enforce zero just to make sure SC Linux is stopped. Now we can connect just fine. I'm going to use admin at puppetlabs.com with Puppet Labs. And once we've connected successfully, you will see the Puppet Enterprise console uh, with the node that we just hooked up. In our case, it's scooter.dc1.puppetlabs.net. And you can even see the inventory service is running properly, that all of the factor facts have been uploaded to the Puppet Enterprise console. So just like before, the installation process is very, very, very similar. Uh, the only difference being that a couple of questions have been omitted but the answers can still be changed in the same format as before. There you go. Thanks for watching. Happy puppetizing. And as always, feel free to check out docs.puppetlabs.com for more information and all your puppet questions. Thanks, guys.